Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk about your LinkedIn profile. So I have 10 tips that I'm going to give on how you can optimize your LinkedIn profile to get more business and to be more visible. So the first one I have is really to make sure you're using the photos correctly. So there's the two photos, there's your profile photo, which is your face, um, and then there's that background photo. So a lot of times with the background photo, people think it needs to be a picture. It can be a picture, but it can also be words. So if you have clients you've worked with, or you have a company name or a tagline you wanna put on there, um, definitely do that. A lot of people leave it blank. I think having something there does make you, um, you know, catches the eye a little bit more than just having the standard blue background. Um, and then for your profile picture, you know, you obviously want to have a good quality photo, um, something current. If you have something of you, you know, in action, so if you are a speaker, a presenter, or a trainer, you know, you could use something like that that shows that you are actually doing, you know, that you are a speaker um, or a trainer. And the second tip is really looking at your headline. So that's what's right, the part right below your name. So a lot of people think they have to put, you know, just intercultural trainer, for example. Um, you do want to put that, but just be creative. You can do more than that. You can put, um, you know, how you help people. So I have um, preparing organizations for the future of global work, right? You could say, um, intercultural consultant or expat coach, you know, helping people adapt to life abroad. Um, that's just a little bit catchier and makes you, again, makes you stand out from other people. Um, you do want to make sure that you have something there that says intercultural or cross-cultural because keywords are really important um, to LinkedIn. And, and in that uh, headline or right below it, it'll have your location. Some people will just put their country I recommend putting your city for sure, uh, because a lot of companies, when they search for intercultural trainers, they actually search by city and not by country. They might search by country, but it's rarer. So if you're in India and you just have India and not Mumbai, for example, when they search from intercultural trainers in Mumbai, you might not show up. Um, the third tip I have is to look at your about section. So these days you really want to write that in the first person so you know you don't want to have nicole is an intercultural trainer who does this it's i you know it's okay to use that people want you to be more personal in um, i would say in general today but definitely in social media um, and don't write one long big paragraph just don't jam your whole bio in there um, using bullet points is really good um, and being very specific about what you do and how you help is gonna be more important than actually just listing the things that they'll probably be able to see later on, like your education and the languages you speak. The fourth tip is to use the featured section. So this is relatively new to LinkedIn. It's a right below the about section, I believe. Um, and you can highlight some things. I wouldn't do too many. I don't know what the max is, but maybe two or three different things you want to highlight. So let's say you started a podcast, you can highlight that there. Or if you have a YouTube video you've done, you can attach that there. If you have a document you put together or a slideshow, anything you, that you really want to stand out, you can have it right at below your picture and your about section so people will be able to easily find it. Um, the fifth, actually I'm putting these together, number five and six, because they're pretty simple. That's your experience and education sections. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You just want to keep those sections up to date. And, um, you know, again, don't, for the experience, don't just say, you know, director of whatever. Um, you want to flush that out a little bit and give them more, give people a better idea of what actually you were doing. Um, remember those keywords again. So you want, I say to try to use all the keywords you can think of, but not in the same spot. So if you say intercultural trainer in your title um, or your headline, then maybe in the about, sec about section, you put cross-cultural consultant. And then maybe under your experience, you have intercultural trainer. You have these slightly different words because you never know the word combo that someone's gonna search for. Um, number seven 
um, is using the section that's the licenses and certifications part. So you want to fill that out. That helps get uh, make you look more credible, um, not more knowledgeable. So if you have any intercultural certifications, you want to put that there. Maybe you have a coaching certification. LinkedIn has LinkedIn Learning, uh, which for if you haven't used it before, usually I, I think it's still the first 30 days is free. So you can take all kinds of courses there and then you can put that in your on your LinkedIn profile. Um, and number eight is the skills section. So I say to put as many as you can. Right? Again, this is for the LinkedIn algorithms and when people are searching or when recruiters are searching for people, it matches to your skills. So if you wanna be hired for intercultural, don't just think, okay, I put intercultural communication, I'm good. Put intercultural communication, put cultural competency, put global mindset, all these words and phrases put under your skills and then a lot of people don't know this. You can actually reorder the skills and pin the top three. So when you go into your LinkedIn profile, you'll be able to see when you edit your skills, you can choose the top three that will always stay at the top. And so if you go to someone else's LinkedIn page and you scroll down, you usually can't see all the skills at once. Uh, you will see the, the three that they've pinned there and if you haven't pinned them linkedin is just probably choosing the top three there and putting them there so i recommend um, editing that because if i want to endorse you for intercultural communication i don't want to have to scroll through all of your skills i want it to be one of those top three so the top three are going to be probably the ones that most people will endorse you for um, and then what am i on eight so number nine recommendations so uh, this also helps you gain credibility. So it could be from clients. If you don't have clients yet because you're new to intercultural, um, it can also be colleagues, coworkers. Do not be afraid to ask. Just say, hey, I know, you know, I know they're time consuming, uh, but would you have time to write me a recommendation around X? Um, and usually people are happy to do it. They might not be able to get to it right away. Um, and But usually they're happy to do it because they want you to write them a recommendation. So you want to make sure you fill that out too, uh, both giving recommendations and getting them. And then the 10th one is don't forget about that accomplishments section at the bottom. So that's where you would put the languages, languages you speak, any publications, if you're published in an article, uh, for example. For intercultural trainers, Language capability is obviously really important because you're dealing with people that speak multiple languages. So make sure that you have that there at the bottom because um, if I was hiring someone, um, I would want that to see that right there. Okay, I know they speak these languages. I don't want to have to go reach out to them to find out. Um, so it just makes people's lives easier that are searching for trainers. And so those are the 10 tips I have. There is one kind of bonus tip. It's not really on your LinkedIn profile, but it is called settings and privacy. So this bugs me uh, personally. Um, so I get it. A lot of people do spam you on LinkedIn. So some people have their privacy settings where, you know, someone can reach out to me and connect with me only if they know me or they need to know my email address in order to connect with me. If you are trying to grow your own business, you know, whether that's as a freelancer or getting your own clients or both, you need to make sure people can connect with you. So please check your settings because this drives me crazy. I see someone, I want to connect with them and I'm not able to because I don't have their email address. And I'm not trying to sell them something. I'm just really generally trying to connect with another intercultural trainer. Um, so you want to network with as many people as possible. So make sure those settings are um, correct. I would go through, there's lots more settings than those, but really um, I think there's one more that you can get your profile, um, partial pro, so people only see part of your profile if they are not connected to you. I say let them see the whole pro profile. You never know who's looking. Could be somebody who's going to give you your next job. So those are my 10 tips plus a bonus um, on how to get more visibility on LinkedIn and how to improve your LinkedIn profile. So as always, give me a call or a shout out uh, if you have any questions. Thanks.